In this video, we'll be going over zero one matrix. So given a matrix consists of zero and one, find the distance to, of the nearest zero for each cell. The distance between two adjacent cells is one. So in our first example, we're given this matrix and we're trying to find the nearest zero for each of the cells. And if the current cell has a value of zero, then the distance will be equal to zero. But then if the current cell is equal to one, you want to find the nearest cell. So in this case, the nearest one is one distance away from in all four directions. So we place one here. Now, now let's look at the second example. We're given this matrix. All of the zeros are still giving a distance of zero. But in this case, we have a one here, but it's a distance of two away from zero. So we have one, two, or one, or if we start from here, we have one, two, or one, two, or one, two. So it, and all of the distance is two distance away. So we place two here. So let's go over a dot process. So the brute force approach, is to perform a breadth-first search from all of the cells which contains a 1. This approach will cost us all of n square time complexity because the breadth-first search costs all of n. Then we perform each breadth-first search on each cell which will give us of n squared. Now let's go, now let's go over our optimized approach. For each of the cell at RC, which contains a one, if the cell above at R minus one, at row R minus one, is X distance away from a zero, then we know the current cell is x plus 1 distance away from a 0. But we should note that this applies to all four directions. Since we want the minimum distance to a 0, we will want to pick the minimum distance from all four directions. Now let's go over a pseudocode. So we'll first create a distance matrix, which will keep track of the distances to the nearest zero. We will first fill the matrix say distance matrix we'll first fill the distance matrix with 10,000 that's the maximum dis uh, that's the maximum distance so we initially set the maximum distance then we will first find the minimum distance for the cell above and to the left to the cell above and to the left. So we're going to iterate from top left to bottom right. Top left to bottom right. We're going to denote it as RC, the current row and column. Then if the current cell at RC is equal to zero, that means the minimum distance to a zero oh, is zero. So we're going to set distance RC to zero. Then we're going to continue to next iteration. Then we will find if R is greater than zero, then we can find the minimum distance to a zero from the cell above. So we're going to update distance RC if distance R minus one and the C plus one is smaller. Then if C is greater than zero, then we can check. We'll find the minimum distance to a zero from the cell to the left. Then we're going to update. Update the current distance. If the cell to the left plus one is smaller. Now we will find the minimum distance 
for the cell to the right and to the cell below. Find the minimum distance to the cell to the right and to and below. Now I'm going to iterate through from bottom left to top right. So it's going very very similar. So we iterate to iterate from bottom uh, bottom right to top left. Top left, denoted as RC. And then we don't need this anymore because we already accounted for it for the pre from the previous iteration. So if R is not at the last row, that means we can check the row below. We can check for the cell below. So the update, the current cell, if the cell below at R plus one plus one is smaller, and then if C is not at the last column, then we can check the minimum distance to the right, to the cell at the right. And then we're going to update distance RC if the cell to the right plus one is smaller. Then we can return our distance matrix. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is all of three to the n, uh, three times n. It's always go to all of n, where n is the total number of cells in the input matrix. So we will. This is because we first fill distance with max distance. Then we perform two iterations. Our space complexity is go to all of n, which is our distance matrix. Distance matrix. Now let's go over the code. First, create keep track of the total number of rows and columns. Should be for that. Let's check. Check the parameters. That's good. Mm, so we're gonna create our distance matrix. So it's gonna be int m and n, and we're gonna fill the the mate uh, the distance matrix with the maximum distance in the beginning. Let's create a variable for max distance. Now we're, we're going to find the minimum distance to a zero on the left side and to the top. So we iterate from top left to bottom right. Then if the current make the current cell contains a zero, then the distance to a zero is gonna be zero. Let's put a zero and then continue the next cell. And then if R is greater than zero, that means we can find the minimum distance above for the cell above. So we're gonna update distance RC if the cell above is smaller. C minus one, the cell above plus one. Then if C is greater than zero, then we can find the smaller distance to the cell on the left. So we get C minus one, the cell to the left. Now we're gonna iterate through from bottom right to top left. Very similar process. We're not gonna need this anymore because we already counted for the last iteration. So we're gonna start from the last row and move toward the first row. And then we'll start at the last column and move toward the first column. If R is not in the last row, if R is not in the last row, we can find the row, uh, find the distance to the nearest zero for the cell below. Below the current cell, so it's R plus one. And then if C is not in the last column, 
then we're going to find the minimum distance to a zero for the cell to the right. So we see plus one. And then we can return distance. So the current row. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.